So welcome to this lecture, Afro here. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about the filtering data within Talent Open Studio. So working with data and being able to filter data. Now, why is this lecture very important? Why is this uh, topic of filtering data important? Because more often than not, uh, if you're doing data integration and you're connecting to different data sources and you're ingesting data, there might be situations where maybe the data from the source is too uh, it's too huge, maybe millions of records, and you don't need to ingest all that data into your uh, data integration flow. Uh, in that case, we need to go ahead and filter that data. We need to catch the good data and be able to handle the rejects based on some criteria, some condition that you decide. Also, you know, we don't only apply one single filter to the data as it's coming. We might have situations where we might want to check for different conditions. So if first name is null and last name is not null and email is blank, then we need to, you know, email this customer or we need to do something. Well, if email is blank, you wouldn't be emailing a customer anyways. But if, if that is the case, then you might want to say, well, we need to find another way to contact this customer. So being able to filter data and to get subsets of data is something that's very vital uh, in the data integration process. Uh, in the last lecture, we talked about joins and uh, focusing on the TMAP and being able to leverage the TMAP to not only do joins, but to catch the rejects from the joins. So this lecture will be a continuation of that. If you missed it, uh, you, you want to go back and watch that lecture to see how we talked about joins and being able to catch uh rejects from those joints uh so that you know that this will be a continuation of what we talked about in that particular lecture i'm going to go there and summarize it really quick and i'm going to switch over and talk about some of the components that are available for us uh, within talent open studio to really filter data uh, from single sources for multiple sources handle those rejects and so that the data that we we get into our systems is what we really want let's switch over to studio here in this case and what we have from where we left off last time was a job that looked like this i'm gonna just make it look the same the way we had it and we had data coming from some different data sources we ran it through a team map we were able to cache the good records the bad record and the way we did that was leveraging uh, the functionality within team map where you can select a component and you can tell it to catch your rejects from your inner joints uh, and things like that. And so this is one way uh, that we can filter records or another approach we talked about is you can add expressions and if those expression con conditions aren't met. So for example, I can say if customer number, I can bring this say if customer number equals to 100, so whatever record comes in here is only if this condition is met. If customer number equals 100, otherwise the out, it, it comes here because it's going to catch the output reject from here. So you can really get that flexibility in terms of handling data within uh, the team app. Now, uh, but talent offers you more capabilities beyond the team app. And that comes from uh, those who fall under the, the criteria of, of uh, you know, uh, data quality, actually data quality and so that falls on that data quality. We talked about data quality and let's look at processing and processing. So that's where you find a lot of the other components that are available to filter records uh, from within Talent Open Studio. So let's build a job. One of those components here is filter columns. If you're trying to filter columns or if you're trying to filter rows, uh, we can leverage these two components. Of course, there's way more, but we're gonna focus on those two for this part of the lecture. Here, I have a folder ready to go for filters. So we're gonna create a new job. Give it a name, toss filter. And we are going to be leveraging the connections that we had before. So if you remember earlier, we created a connection to the retailer DB, which has some customer table. So we're gonna bring a customer table, MySQL input, and that's all good. But in this case, what we wanna do is we don't wanna look at every single customer that's available within the table. 
we want to look at the subset of it. So if we go back here, preview that table, we see that there are many, many, many customers here. Some with the customer number ranging all the way. Let's just scroll down to 400. What we want to do is look at the subset to say, well, if records are, you know, uh, less than 100, we want to send it one way. If it's greater than 100, we send it another way. So that's what we're going to be doing. So we want to filter that record within Studio. And what we can do here is we can start using the T filter filter row for that so in addition to the T map as I mentioned earlier for for that we can leverage the T filter row so we want to connect this component uh, to that and now we select our filter row component so we can actually configure it so in this case I, I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna select that filter row component and I'm gonna you know configure that, that. before we go in there let's look at the schema we see these are the attributes that are coming in. Everything looks good. Nothing to change from a schema perspective. Now we want to go into the condition. So what are we trying to, to filter out? We can choose the column that we want to apply the filter condition on. In this case, I'll leave it as customer number and the operator that we're trying to perform. So if customer number is equals to, not equals to, greater than, you really have the flexibility here. So what I want to do in this case, I'll say if customer number is greater than, I'll give it the value 100 then send it one way if it's not greater than 100 send it another way very basic stuff uh, in this case we're gonna have two outputs coming here so let's do t log row two times so t log row one t log row two so if you right click on this for this component it has two options so these are the records that are filtered these are the records filter meaning they don't meet that condition so fit well do, do, let me step back here these are the records that are filtered because they meet that condition so these are the records that are greater than 100 which i put in there and anything that's not greater than 100 which i want to catch in my rejects that's what i'm going to put down here as well so you really have that flexibility to get the records that you want or cache the records that you don't want. I don't I don't have to necessarily cache this. If you don't need this, you can just ignore this and you're good. But in this case, I want to print both to the screen. So the records that are greater than 100 and the records that don't meet that condition will flow into my rejects, right? This could be going to a database. This could be going to another file. You really have that flexibility, but I'm writing all of this to the screen just so we have an idea of what happens in this case. So if you go ahead, run that job, And there you have it. So uh, unfortunately, all my records in this case, none of them were filtered. So let's go ahead and see why. <laughs> Usually this should not happen, but it did happen. So customer number greater than, ah, there you go. I'm saying customer number greater than 100, right? But guess what? Everything is greater than 100. So for you developers out there, you always have to pay attention, right? Because if the condition is always true, you're not going to have any rejects. So maybe what I want to do should be 200 so that I can have some other records that don't meet that condition. So let's do 200. That's what I actually intended. So if we do 200, we see some records should go up and some records should go down. So 90 were, less th or were greater than 200 and then 30 were less than 200. And that's what it tells us. So this can really be going to two different systems. So that's how we do filtering uh, of rows of the data itself uh, within Talent. Now, there is another filter that we can do uh, within Talent, and that's called the filtering of columns. So we, in this case, we have a data set that's coming in. And let's take a look at the schema here coming from this database. We have... I mean, there's a lot of columns here, maybe 20 or, or more. I'm not quite sure, but let's say 20. Maybe I don't want to process all these columns in my flow. I want to take a subset of it. How do I filter out the columns to, to a specific subset of columns? Remember, we can do something similar to this within a T-map. If you haven't watched the T-map video, uh, just go back and find the video that talks about joints and T-map. You should be able to, to see what we mean by uh, selecting the columns that we want. But in this case, 
uh, if we're not working with the team, we can still filter the columns to, uh, to get just the specific columns that we want. So if we had 20 columns coming in here and we wanted to send just five columns downstream out of the 20, we can also do that by leveraging the talent instead of a filter row. We're going to be using a filter column component. So let's go ahead and make a copy of the filter job in here so we can make our modifications to that. So thus, filter columns. So this is filter rows and this is filter columns. We can edit that job. And that's one way you can make copies of jobs. I usually do that sometimes just so that I'm not modifying a job that I'm maybe currently working on and have a backup to it. So in this case, we, we do a T filter columns. Instead of rows, we're doing T filter columns. So now we get our input set. We map it to that. And within the T filter columns, here you can edit the schema. And this is really what's happening. This is a very basic, basic component to work with. You select the component, you edit the schema. And here you have your input columns. The question is, what do you want for your output? I can then select what I want for my output. I can want, I can say, I want this. Or I can do a couple of that and say, I want those over. Now, when I do that, those, again, I don't need to split it out because it's just going to be, I'm filtering the columns, not the data itself. If you notice, it's just main, unlike the, the, the filter and the rejects. In this case, it's just main because all I'm doing is just filtering the columns. And if I look at this here, you notice, we got to do one more thing. Let's sync the columns. If I look at this, you notice it's just the five, four, four columns that are coming through out of over 20 that we had there right again there might be legitimate situations where you don't have to uh, get all the columns you need from a source system you might want to uh, filter out just for specific columns uh, so that you can use within your transformations without bringing in a hundred or two hundred or a thousand columns uh, from a database uh, and make it very uh, you know difficult to work with so in this case you can leverage something like the filter columns a component filter those columns and then use it uh, downstream now Let's switch back over and just do a recap of this piece. We've talked about filtering, uh, being able to filter columns uh, from filtering data, catching errors, uh, handling rejects uh, that don't meet uh, certain conditions that we've set. Uh, we can filter uh, columns uh, from data sets so that we're not bringing in every column that we have available in the, in the source system. And this really gives us you know, some fine grain uh, ability to control uh, data or the schemas or the, you know, basically the columns that we're working with as well. Now, the next lecture would switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, context variables and uh, working with a repository uh, context variables versus built-in context variables. So this is something that would be very, very powerful when we're talking about doing proper software development lifecycle and making things very, uh, very easy to manage and to move across different environments. So stay tuned for the next lecture coming up.